September 1st, 1960. Cars and crews roll into the Detroit dragway from all across the country, eager for competition in the sixth annual National Drag Race Championships. No time is lost getting these high-powered quarter milers ready for the pre-race safety inspection. Protective road coverings are removed and crews make a quick check for travel damage. More than 1,000 cars are entered, divided among 14 stock car classes and 36 hot car classes. But no car is allowed to run in a National Hot Rod Association sanctioned event unless it passes through NHRA's mechanical inspection. Lanes set up for the various classes permit orderly inspection of the large number of cars. It takes time, but when a driver pushes his car to the limit, trying to hit top speed and nothing flat, there can be no compromise with mechanical safety. You pass or you join the spectators. The experienced NHRA inspectors carefully examine a number of important areas. More than 30 are covered by the safety regulations. Front wheels are given close inspection. At 150 miles per hour, failure in the front wheel assembly would create somewhat of a steering problem. One of the required accessories is a heavy gauge metal shield to cover flywheel and clutch. Should these parts break or come loose at high RPMs, driver and spectators are protected. Additional safety for the driver is provided by the metal roll bar that must extend at least three and a half inches above the driver's helmet. A safety harness fastened to the frame of the car holds the driver securely in place. Each of the requirements on the list is checked off. Cars that fail to qualify may be re-inspected after the faults have been corrected. A well-equipped metal shop is on hand to help make required changes or repairs. Roll bars are altered. Flywheel shields are fabricated and installed on the spot. A special lane is provided to speed up examination of previously rejected cars. With the first inspection record in hand, the inspector need only examine the corrected items. After a car has been given the mechanical OK, it is pushed to the weigh-in area. Cars are pushed because many are not equipped with starters or cooling systems. And then, why wear out the engine when you have a strong crew? First, the empty weight of the car is recorded. Assault 1 weighs in at 1,498 pounds. Next, the car and driver are weighed together. Finally, the weight ratio between front and rear wheels is determined. Safe handling of the car requires correct weight distribution. While early inspection, weigh-ins, and classification were taking place, the electronic timing devices were being ready to clock the elapsed times as well as the speed at the end of the quarter-mile run. Recording instruments are housed in the timing tower. The monitor shack connects all areas of the dragway by phone. Successfully passed inspection and weigh-in, cars are moved to the pit area to be groomed for their first run. The first three days of the meet are devoted to time trials, and engines are tuned and retuned. Finally, the only answer is out on the strip. The big go is on. At the starting line, the Deseronto Drag Strip Indians, a car club from Ontario, Canada, direct the cars up to the mark. <laughs> 
In the time trials, cars run the quarter mile alone against the clock, striving for low elapsed time and top speeds at the finish line. are measured to the hundredth of a second with the accurate Krondek system. At the starting line, a car's front wheels are stopped just short of the electric eye. The instant the ray is broken, the timer is started. Three beams at the finish form the traps, measuring end of run speed and elapsed time. Results are kept for each entry in each of the 36 classes. When each run is completed, the monitor phones the car number, ETN speed, to a group stationed near the end of the track on the return road. A card is given to the driver with all the data on his run. Elapsed time, 11.50. Top speed, 129.37. To hot rodders, there is always room for improvement. So before the next trip, it's back to the pits for rework. Quite often transmissions are torn apart and gears changed, or engines are completely overhauled or even replaced. Pit crews appreciated the on-the-spot distribution of spark plugs. Plenty of racing oil was close at hand, and plenty of cooling fluid for hot crews. Probably one of the most important jobs in running a smooth racing event is in the hands of the staging area personnel. As cars move up to the track, they are first directed into one of two lanes. Then they are further separated, according to class, in six lanes. This allows the staging area director to keep a steady flow of the various class cars moving to the starting line. Once the driver reaches the head of his lane, he waits to be called to the starting line. push to start the engine, and he's ready for the race against time. Sundown, the machines rest, while the crews go for a look at the big National Custom Car Show of 1960. Beautifully displayed dream cars at the Detroit Armory competed for honors in styling and custom craftsmanship. The X-Pac 400 Air Car Experimental Class winner was an exciting look into the future. The fabulous Golden Sahara II is an all-electronically controlled custom. The big show provided four days of automotive splendor for admiring crowds. Sunday morning, start of class elimination runs. The starting area was washed and brushed clean to help the rear wheel racing slicks grab a good bite on the asphalt. Any loss of traction here can cost the driver the race. The crowds came. They packed lunches, radios, ice boxes, children, everything for an exciting day at the drag races. All the staging lanes were quickly crowded with cars and crews. Class eliminations are two-car heats run tournament style. 
The loser is eliminated while the winner returns to race again. On either side of the finish line, a bank of lights flashes on automatically, indicating the winning lane to the entire crowd of spectators. One of the rules of the Nationals requires all entries to use gasoline only. To enforce this rule, a fuel check was set up along the road back to the pit area. Samples were taken from the tanks and examined chemically for any evidence of special racing fuel mixtures, such as alcohol or nitro combination. As the eliminations continue, the field narrows and competition becomes keener. The cars that remain are carefully gone over and retuned to a high pitch of performance. Everything must be in perfect order. Engine timing is adjusted. Superchargers get a going over. Say ah, please. The last engine bolt is tightened, wheels checked, and then back to battle it out for class honor. race is fast, and the result conclusive. In each class, one car, one driver, finally emerges as champion. And the class winners are eligible to compete for one of the elimination titles. Top, middle, little, street, and stop. The night before the big day, the cars are divided into proper eliminator classes. The crowds are out. The chips are down. Again, the elimination, two up, one down. The experts pick the winners as the field narrows to the five final runs of the big go. First is the stock eliminator run. The next heat is for the street eliminator title. Now the run for Little Eliminator. Next, Middle Eliminator. Now for the big prize of the meet, Top Eliminator. There's 
the light, it's the Albertson Olds from California. In this year's Nationals, more than $30,000 worth of prizes went to the various winners. Two things. A twin Chevy-powered dragster from California is sure enough a double winner with one trophy for top speed of the meet, 171.10 miles per hour, and another for best engineered car. Stock Eliminator title goes to a hometown Pontiac. Street Eliminator award was captured with an ET of 13.14 seconds and top speed of 108.56 miles per hour by the custom speed shop entry from Washington, D.C. Taking the Little Eliminator title for the second straight year, George Montgomery of Dayton, Ohio, turned 119.94 miles per hour in 11.88 seconds in a Cadillac-powered Willys. Licklighter Brothers Chrysler-driven competition coupe with an elapsed time of 10.35 seconds and top end speed of 152.80 miles per hour took middle eliminator awards. A trophy for the mantle and a falcon for the garage. The big moment for the big winner of the 1960 national meet. Albertson Olds entry from Culver City, California, won top eliminator honors with a 9.81 elapsed time in the final heat. The grand prize is worth racing for, and so, judging by the expression, is the title of Mr. Eliminator, top driver of 1960's Big Go.